Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover, your home for ice fishing news, tips, stories, and strategies. And now, your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. We're at the St. Paul Ice Show in St. Paul, Minnesota. The cool thing about this show, anyone who is anyone in ice fishing is here. And today we're talking with Billy Lindner. Billy, thanks for joining us. I'm really excited to be here. I'm up here actually shooting a bunch of pros. We have a studio built up in the up in the upstairs loft, and uh, what we're doing is making making uh, bites of uh, commentary that's going to be used throughout the season as uh, as sort of uh, pro tips and pro knowledge. We're we're getting into the kind of the heart of souls and and bodies of these guys. So it's pretty fun. It's like we're we're eking out a lot of detail and a lot of fun as well we're trying to make it a really fun project yeah you get an opportunity to pretty much talk and that's the cool thing again about this show is that everybody's here what kind of tips are you get are people sharing with you well there a lot of them are sharing real locational tips but we're asking a little more esoteric questions about how do they feel about other anglers on the ice how do they react to what's the worst conditions you've ever been in what's the most brutal situation you've had unique experiences where we're, what's your bucket list for the biggest fish what is the most oddball fish at your that you like i mean out of what out of the normal and we get everything from rock bass to burbot to to uh yellow sun yellow yellow tails and and uh wipers i think a lot of people know the linder name just through Al and, and what he's done, what do you do? For people who maybe, I know you're kind of more of a behind-the-scenes kind of guy, Absolutely. what do you do for people who are wondering what Billy Linder's all about? Well, I'm basically a videographer, director, still photographer, and I work primarily with, with a lot with my family and the Linder's Angling Edge and the whole outfit, making kind of the behind-the-scenes underwater shots, beauty scenics, uh, jumping fish stuff that requires those tank tank shots things that require a lot more uh wrangling per se i mean i i usually it's entourage shooting there's a lot of guys helping me it's a lot different than the figgy or, or just basic uh real real down and dirty shooting gorilla shooting as we like to call it that is so popular with all these kids are doing and everyone can do that so i guess a little niche that I have is doing the things that are take a lot more effort, and it's old school using a lot of the uh, the old film technology. I mean, I work with a lot of equipment and grip gear, and have that old was trained. I was trained in commercial film on the cities by one of the most famous directors and creative guys in the industry, Saidi Koss, and I worked with him for 25 years and got mentored by some of the the best lighting guys directors and I, I learned inside I gripped for them when I was younger so I brought that technology up and worked worked that into our shtick at Linder Media with the family so I was able to make a I guess a little higher end production out of what we we do the look the polish the finish you know putting the f- little flourishes in the shows you know so that's I guess that's kind of what I do but underwater is my passion I mean I, I'm a scuba diver I've I've dove since I was I've been 16 years old, and I've had a camera in my hands that long, as well, and uh, I I just love it. To me, it's more satisfying to get a good image of a a fish, something going on, than it is to catch one. I grew up in the Linder family. Obviously, I've fished my entire life and been around the best fishermen. So it's like, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have that desire to be to just have to cook and catch fish like my uncle and my brother where they you know they just can't and all these other naturals that I work with they they just can't help themselves from fishing when you're out on the water trying to shoot them and they're flipping a jig right away and they're looking around where the next fish is and it's like let's let's make some cool shots and it's like they, they, but they're the naturals and those are the kids I like to the, the guys I like to work with you can tell you know a natural when you see one and there's that's a lot of the guys we got upstairs that we're interviewing, kids that grew up, and they're the kids that sat on the docks catching perch and catching frogs, and they just lived that immersion in the fish with fish, and their life is about fish. And I kind of have a lot of other varied interests and things. I'm a, I'm a food photographer. I've shot architectural stuff. I've done 
gardening stuff. I have a lot of other interests and things that I like to shoot. But underwater photography is absolutely my biggest passion. And I, I work a lot with, I've been working a lot with a company, well, Aquaview, which is a leader in underwater cameras. And I make imagery for them. So I'm always hunting for the, the beauty killer shot of fish striking. I mean, fish striking underwater to me is a big goal of mine. I mean, I'm like always doing that. When I'm fishing, primarily I have a camera rolling hot on when I'm fishing. And that's like fishing with both hands tied behind your back, a blindfold on, <laughs> because the fish are normally not real hip to the camera, especially like walleyes, predators, you know. Some fish are curious, like smallies and, and sunfish they can be, but overall, you know, it's a challenge because you are, it's just so much, you can't just run around from hole to hole and fish like normal and, and ice fishing. You have to move all your apparatus because I, I mean, my setups are a little bit more elaborate than just pushing a button. I mean, I have cords and wires and rigs, so I have to pull my stuff around on a sled. But that's where wheelhouse fishing kind of, kind of uh, opened my eyes. I mean, I was a guy that was a run and gunner, grew up in the world of, of chasing fish out on the ice with machines and, and walking. And I, I I had the luxury of hooking up with some wheelhouse guys and working with well, Trevor, you know, and, and uh, other wheelhouse men. And I, I learned the beauty and the luxury of wheelhouse fishing. Now that I'm older, I see the power. I mean, sitting here right now in this Yeti, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this feels good, and I love being in a fish house. I love, I like staying in a fish house overnight and being on the water because for photography, it's just critical. It's, I mean, it's just perfect because you can get up in the morning. Um, you're waiting for that first first light. You're there at that last light. You're not hauling your stuff off the ice and throwing it in the back of the truck when it's you know 20 below. You're in here, and it, it just, I, anyway, I, I love wheelhouse fishing, but I guess the point I was going for is, is the uh, the shooting, the underwater shooting that I've been able to do in wheelhouses has been tremendous. Just because of the long ter the long nature of how long you can do, you can be plugged in, you, all your electrics right there, you can have more technology, you can be looking at the big screen and watching what you're doing hooked in plugged in and also the timing as well it's like you get up you get up in the morning like when i'm when i if i was in this wheelhouse right now this would be this would be my bunk and i'd have my lines i'd have my camera everything all set so it, when dawn came and those walleye that window when walleyes will bite i'm jigging as the light is coming on i'm i start when it's dark and watch watch the the day come on and that's usually when you can get some of the money shots and those fish come in and they're that and of course dusk but i don't know I, I just love the whole process but it's cool to be laying next to your camera knowing that you're going to wake up in the morning and be rolling hot you know yeah not to mention putting time lapses outside shooting this shooting the clouds ripping by or you know whatever it just it's the fish house life i'm sold i mean the whale house life i'm i'm kind of a, a big 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 fan and you're a guy you know i think that people may not know your name just because you are a behind the scenes guy yeah but everyone has seen your work and when you talk to people in this industry and they see pictures they're like oh that's a billy shot yep yeah. that's a billy shot so i think people who are in that's the industry <laughs> know you they love you they know your style they know what billy shots look like so i think you know maybe the the average person doesn't know who you are just because of how you work and, and the way that you go about your business but everybody that knows what's going on knows who you are and what we wanted to talk to you today about though was that underwater video and maybe what you can do to help the people who are listening to our show get better video so how would you go about setting up your camera when you're out fishing if you were going to come out, we're going to put this out in the lake, and we want to get some good video with our underwater cameras. How are we going to set it up? Well, the obvious most critical factor is getting in the right spot, and that pre-scouting and getting in the zone where those fish are. And in my case, I'm looking for beauty. I'm looking for places where there's rocks, boulders, weeds, something interesting, if, if the fish are in that habitat. And I'll, I'll line up my holes and scout with a little camera and look around for all. Oh, there's a there's a really cool rock drop with a, a weed weed wall behind it and it's like that's going to be frame up to be a gorgeous shot if when the fish come in 
So I'll kind of set up like that or look look around before you set the house up even, you know. And that's that's kind of a big deal. But as far as the camera and the actual technology of recording, that's that's pretty basic. I mean, the little cameras, like the micro cameras, you can record right on them, and it's a no-brainer. Just you could drop the thing, drop the thing down in down view, side view, look up, quarter down, and and just run around with the thing. That's that's one thing I'd say about camera work with those little portable cameras, which are really really a players because you can work so fast and move around and hunt for fish and habitat with them but I'd play with looking up a lot you know a lot of guys just have the camera set so it's looking parallel to the bottom and across and that's the look but you drop that thing down and you can adjust just the camera head on it so it's going to be pointing up and all of a sudden you're seeing a whole different perspective more like you're scuba diving and you're seeing fish up above and I, I'm off I've been surprised at how many fish are riding high way above what you'd see normally traditionally on your normal perspective of cameraing so I'd say that and down viewing is cool too and quartering down and I found that for getting fish to strike especially wary fish like walleyes that taking the camera and adjusting it so it's pointing down and gets out of the the fish's sight so they're not they're not having that camera right right in their face with the lure mm -hmm. the the camera's up above looking down like this so you're you're seeing you're seeing you, i see a lot more productivity in getting walleye strikes like that plus they look kind of cool down but i i just fool around with angles and just like any photography i'm looking for different variations of of shots that are going to be pretty i guess is a long run because i'm recording stuff and it's going to be used it's going to be played on big screens and shows like this it's going to be on the web and internet we might use it in a commercial we'll use it in a tv show you know all that is kind of critical to making and you know to, to what i do right i mean then my setups are i guess that that's sort of what you were getting at right yeah and what i i think here's a good question for you I think what you're doing is you're setting up to get a, a really beautiful shot. How would someone, how does that compare to somebody who's just using that camera as a fishing tool? How is it different from what you do to maybe what a guy just wants to go out and put a whole bunch of fish in the bucket? I, I think that one of, the, one of the strongest reasons to use a camera for the average guy is to go out and watch see how fish react i mean see how they react to their your baits whether they're tentative and you'd be surprised at how much fish respond and how how many times that fish come in and, and especially panfish will come up and grab that lure and you don't you don't feel them with the most sensitive rod rods that are made i mean that's in and out of their mouth so fast and you you wonder why you know you're seeing marks on the screen and oftentimes you're getting hit you're getting whacked and you don't even know it they suck that thing in, in and out so fast i mean that's the reaction noticing the cadence of of your jigging whether you're jigging faster or slower whether the fish are spooked when you start really banging it you know and then it's like geez i you know it's obviously slow down so things like that are are pretty helpful to the guys that are you know out there using the camera and also another thing that that's that it's valuable for is is watching fish move like the directions that they're moving you'll notice that there'll be schools of fish that come from they come from one direction and a lot of a lot of times fish are moving all the time especially walleyes everyone thinks walleyes kind of sit you see them on their depth finder that well, well there's a walleye he's going to be there in my experience from scuba diving and, and underwater camera stuff the uh <laughs> walleyes are moving way more than you think they are they're just circling around reefs they're moving they're constantly on the run so when you see them and mark them they're in that area but they do spin around and come back and they circle and it's that's that's part of the the fascination and things that you can understand and learn is fish behavior and how they how they move in their environment to me that's fascinating and it's helpful for fishermen I know you're a busy guy. You've got people calling you to come up and shoot with you, so I'm not going to keep you much longer. But my question for you now, what's your favorite shot you've ever taken? Um, wow. I don't, what's the piece you want hanging over your casket? 
Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's a Trevor, dark question. Trevor, that's dark. Did Trevor set you up for that? It's like that's a total Trevor question. I would say that uh, um, there was a shot I made back probably eight years ago of a of a brook trout coming up for a fly in current with beautiful weeds underneath it, and it it ended up being a really painterly artistic shot, just the way it the colors and the blend and the movement for an underwater fish shot that's probably probably one of the coolest shots that I, I like. I mean I've had a lot of underwater shots that I really really like and recently I've done a whole series for Northland of shots that I think I really like and they're heavily photoshopped, they're art you know directed art directed and and uh, manipulated per se so they more like end up like paintings then with the photographs as being the elements, several photographs combined into one shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's some the kind of thing that uh, I've been doing recently that I think is pretty cool. But yeah, I don't. I mean, as far as a favorite shot that that uh, brook trout coming up on a fly in the current and just it just captures the essence of fly fishing, you know, awesome. the anticipation and the color. I guess it's the color and the movement that. Is something that's strong for me, just the art factor. Fantastic, Billy. Thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, I know you got to go, but uh, we really appreciate you coming on, sharing some of your knowledge and just some of your background. I think it's so cool to talk to people like you that have seen so much in this industry and have seen things change and, and see how we're progressing. Yeah. So fun to chat with you, and hope to have you on the show again. Thank you. I'd love to. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover. For more ice fishing content, visit our blog at catchcover.com.